Hello Zany friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is T and TBR, but today we are going to talk about my April books, which I had a very interesting April reading. Uh, but of course we also talk about tea, so I have my brand new Bridgerton mug. You can see that it says Queen on it right there. This was a Target uh, collaboration and it was so beautiful and I had to get it. But the tea that I'm actually drinking today is the new Republic of Tea Eloise tea, which is uh, lemon mint black tea. And I cannot wait to try this. I actually have also like the last season's Penelope tea that they did. And I think I also have one from um, the Charlotte series as well. I don't remember. But anyway, um, this is still really hot, but I'm ready to drink it and talk about books with you. Let's go. Now, first for all you stat lovers out there, I'm going to talk about what I basically did for the month of April. Um, in the month of April, I read 15 books and a total of 4,951 pages. Um, this was kind of spread across quite a few different formats, which is great. So I did five physical books, seven ebooks, one audiobook, and two books that were kind of like a mixture of either physical and ebook with audio. The majority of the books that I read this last month were either mystery, that was like my highest category, but thriller and horror I also read kind of, I think, three each. And then the rest were spread across nonfiction, contemporary, fantasy, or YA fantasy. Uh, I only had one five-star read this month, which is crazy. I had three that are 4.5 stars, five that were four stars, four that there were 3.5 stars, and one each that were three or 2.5 stars. And probably the lowest amount of DNFs I had all month. I only DNF'd two bucks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's jump in and talk about the books. And as you know, when I do review, or you may not know this, but when I review on uh, like TikTok or Instagram, I never give my star views because I really try to give you a positive spin on why you might want to read this book. And just because a book isn't for me doesn't mean it's not for you. But I will try to give you my own opinions on that. And in this video, I will get tell you what my stars were for that, just, just for you guys. So we're gonna start chronologically. The first book that I read in the month of April was Every Time I Go on Vacation Someone Dies by Katherine Mack. I gave this book 4.5 stars. I thought it was so much fun. Um, it is the beginning of a series where a woman who is an author has celebrated like 10 books or 10 years, I can't remember which one it is, with a trip to Italy and uh, she's going with a bunch of her reading fans and the guy that she has basically based her books on is part of the tour and comes up to her and says, I think someone's gonna kill me. I think someone's trying to kill me here. So she's trying to figure out who that is and why. Uh, it is great fun and I cannot wait to read the next one. I thought that uh, it, it's like the perfect summer vacation read, honestly. Um, I actually kind of want to read it again. Is that is that bad? I want to read it again. The next one is The One That Got Away With Murder by Trish Lundy. This is a YA thriller book. I ended up giving this one four stars and it is the story of this girl who moves across the country with her mom due to some issues that she had previously. And she ends up hooking up with this guy, um, doesn't know anything about him. It's like very casual hookup. And then once school starts, she comes to find out that him and his brother are both accused of killing their ex-girlfriends. And she kind of doesn't believe it, but there is a lot of evidence to the contrary. So she starts stumbling across a lot of evidence. Um, and so she tries to piece the whole thing together. It was kind of an intense book. There are some trigger warnings here, so make sure you check them out. But all in all, I thought it was a really compelling read and I thought it was a really good YA thriller as well. And the twist kind of got me, I'm not gonna lie. Next is a reread. This is a uh, I Vow So Bold and Deadly. This is the third book in the Curse Breaker series from Bridget Kemmerer. And I was reading this with my friend Erin as a buddy read because she had never read Bridget Kemmerer before. And I was like, girl, 
we're doing this. So we actually read the first two books last month, and then in the month of April, we read this one. Of course, I love this book. I gave it 4.5. I think I maybe gave it 5 the first time, 4.5 the second time, mainly because it's just one of those that, like, I could continue to read, but it's not my favorite series of her. And I say this every time. It's not my favorite series, but it is pretty awesome. So... If you have not read Bridget, and I cannot stop recommending Bridget to be able, you need to do it. You just, you need to pick it up. It is a good time. And of course I didn't tell you what it was about. So this is the story kind of like the first book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, and then it kind of spirals from there. So I'm not going to tell you what the third book is about because it kind of gives away what the first and second book is about. Just trust me. Book number four I read was Spring Harvest by Rectoc Ross. Now, I have read two previous books by Rectoc. Um, that is not her real name. That is just what she goes off. That's her pen name. I found her on TikTok, had read her other books, which was like, I think, Ski Retreat. And there's another one. I can't remember the name of it, honestly. Anyway, so this is Spring Harvest. It's a vampire story. So it is kind of like... Uh, supposing what if you went to Coachella and it was also a garlic festival and there's like music and whatnot but it's kind of in this like skeevy town and there's stuff going on you don't really know about and then all of a sudden chaos breaks out and people are dying and you don't really know why and there's like a stampede and then people disappear and it turns out to be vampires you know <laughs> like that that's basically the story. Um, my biggest problem with this book was that I don't think it was fully fleshed out. I didn't know like even after reading the book, I didn't feel like I knew any of the characters. I didn't really care about any of the characters. The main character, and if you saw my vampire vlog, you know this already, the main character is extremely vapid and shallow. And um, I feel like I'm being too harsh when I say this, but she really is. She's not a likable character. And there were other people that could have possibly been better, more redeemable characters and that just weren't. Um, I don't know. I didn't like how it ended. I thought it was just kind of like, okay, fine. Um, it wasn't like horrible. It was fun. I mean, I think it's a really fun no brainer when it comes to, you know, um, a summertime read. I just didn't think it was like the best horror book I've ever read. And it definitely wasn't the best vampire one I had read during that vlog. So <laughs> that had that not going for it, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're if you're looking for something that's a totally easy read, this one could be okay for you. It could be. Um, uh, like I said, I like her previous book better. Um, though I can't remember what it's called. Let me see if I can look it up. Her last book, Summer Rental. That one was actually really good and I liked it. So book number five, which was also the next book I read for the vampire vlog, is Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan. This, uh, uh, of course, vampires, um, uh, and to kind of give you my journey with this, if you didn't see that one, I will leave the vampire vlog down below. But the thing about this book is that I tried um, reading it, physically, I had it on ebook, and I tried reading it and I got really like not invested in it. I didn't feel like the characters were unique enough. There's four of them, so they weren't like distinct enough for me to be like, okay, I really understand who these people are. I didn't. There's four generations of women. They're running a funeral parlor in like the South. And their basic family job is to keep people from waking up and becoming vampires. They don't call them vampires. They call them like something else, like Sergoy or something. I can't remember. And, um, that's the main premise of the story, but I have to say when I started listening to it on audiobook, I really got into it a lot better. I enjoyed it a lot more and I liked the ending a lot more than I thought I was going to. So I'm really glad I didn't continue to DNF the book. Um, it is also the beginning of a series, so I actually think I'm going to continue on and see what happens to these women. However, I didn't end up giving it a 3.5. It was just fine. Like, it again, wasn't the best horror book that I've ever read but like as far as the uh vampire book goes it was it was fun and then the book number three in that vlog is the gathering by cj tudor now you're going to be like laney you're gonna contradict yourself and i i am i am because in that vlog i actually stated that bless your heart was my favorite but i end up low like giving it a lower star rating than the gathering and that is based purely on enjoyability okay so like I enjoyed 
bless your heart. I enjoyed reading it more than I enjoyed The Gathering, but I felt like The Gathering was a better story overall. Does that make sense? Um, so The Gathering um, was another one. I almost DNF this book as well. And then I went back to it and it's it's literally the story of like this protected vampire community like up in Alaska or something like maybe it's not Alaska, but it's like super high north. And um, this detective comes to investigate a murder because it could either be a human or it could be a vampire. And if it's a vampire, they're allowed to call the colony and basically wipe them all out. And uh, this is kind of like this whole the politics of the the vampire community there and like uh, the the dynamics of humans versus vampires. It was all very interesting. Um, I don't think the ending was very shocking, but I thought that the way it was written was pretty cool when it comes to that dynamic. So I think I, that's why I gave it a higher rating for four stars instead of the 3.5 for the other one. But I, I would say like in general, they, they were both, you know, fairly solid. And now we're going to come to my five star read of the month. Took my breath away. <laughs> also, the start of a series, which makes me happy, but this is How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. And this book uh, uh, makes me so happy. I did this as a buddy read with not only Erin, but also Francesca. Um, and this book is about a woman who has to go visit her great aunt and uh, see why she all of a sudden has been included in the will. Her And at that point, her great aunt is alive. They're just like gathering all the people involved to kind of like inform them. But when she gets there, she finds her great aunt dead. And so not only that, but her great aunt has basically been trying to solve her own murder since she was 17 due to a like tarot card reading she gets from a fortune teller. And so she passes this like murder mystery on to her grandniece and her like, um, it's kind of her son, but not really. It's more like adopted son or adopted nephew. It, it's kind of hard to explain. There's a lot of family dynamics in here that are really interesting. But oh my gosh, this book is compelling. It's fast paced. I loved the ending. I mean, if if you like murder mysteries and really like that Agatha Christie vibe, you need to check this book out. It is it's incredible. I love it so much and I cannot wait for the next one to come out. The Five Year Lie by Serena Bowen. Okay, I actually had to sit here and pause and be like, what is this book about? It's one of those. So it's about a woman who has a child and the father of that child doesn't know that the child exists. She works like part-time for her uncle's security company, but the father, like, so you kind of read the story in like two points of views. It's hers in the present and the father's in the past. And he uh, is not who he says he is. And she starts to wonder, like, he disappeared. Like, before the kid was born, he disappeared. And she has always been heartbroken about the fact that he just left her with no word, no nothing. So then, all of a sudden, she gets this text message from him that says, there's an issue, you need to meet me at this other place. And she's like, but I know he's dead. I've seen the obituary. I know he's no longer with, with us. And so she starts to like figure out, try to figure out why she got this text message, but it turns out that it, it had to do with like a cell tower and a glitch that that text message was actually sent like five years prior. And so then she digs into this really further, like into the security company and like what could have possibly made him leave. Um, listen, it, it was a great ride. It was a very fast book, but like, quite honestly, um, even though it was very thrilling, I, I, I still sit here and I have to be like, what was this book about again? Cause it just didn't leave super anything lasting to me. Um, it was, it was just fine. Um, I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. I got a lot of 3.5 stars this month just cause everything was just medium. Then I had Stolen Pieces by S.K. Golden. This was described as like an Ocean's Eleven heisty kind of mystery. And if you have read her other books, she has also uh, written that socialized guide to murder and something else. I can't remember the name of that one, but she has written two in this series. It's like the Pinnacle Hotel Mysteries. 
So I was really interested because I really do like those series, but like uh, something got lost here. So the first half of the book was not heisty. It was very slow. I didn't really care about what was happening, but the second half of the book was, it was very fun at that point, but you know, you get to the end and I, and I just couldn't, I couldn't rate it higher than a 3.5 for that reason. I felt like I was kind of misled. When you tell me I'm going to do a heist, I'm expecting a heist all the way through. And it wasn't even totally a heist book. It was just kind of like a little bit con at the end. I wouldn't say it's Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven is like one of my favorite movies of all time. So don't, don't sell me on that if it's not really like that. You know what I mean? So another book I rated super high this month is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. Um, yes. So I read this. I, I went into this not really knowing what's about, knowing it was a fantasy, being very concerned that this was a fantasy that I would end up DNFing because it would be like maybe too high fantasy for me. But I went into it with my friend Erin, which is what I do when there's a book that I'm intimidated by because I know that if I talk about it with her, I'll end up liking it better. And I love this book. I gave it a 4.5 stars. It is the story of a girl who's, I think her name is Evie. Yeah, Evie. And Evie uh, meets the villain uh, in the forest, basically drops that she's unemployed due to reasons, which you find out. Um, and he's like, cool, you can be my new assistant. Um, and she kind of helps him for a while with his revenge schemes and whatnot and what's really cool about it is she starts to wonder is he really that bad of a guy and you can make the determination yourself again this is the start of a series and I'm very excited that it is and the thing about this is it got a lot darker than I thought it was going to it got a lot more serious than I thought it was going to and you might be the type of person to get to the ending of this book and be like what and feel a little gypped. But I'm going to tell you, if it was not for the fact that I know it's a series and the next book is coming out this year, I probably would feel the same way, but I don't. I think it, it's a great, it's a great book. I had a lot of fun. I couldn't wait to finish it. And reading it like over nine days as a buddy read was almost excruciating because you just wanted to keep going. It was great. Let's Get Quizzical by Kelly Olert. This was sent to me by, uh, I think it was Libro. I think I got it off of, at, in the influencer program at Libro. Um, you know, it was a good premise. It was about a girl who's wanted to be on trivia shows her entire life. So she applies and makes it on one where she has to end up partnering with her ex-boyfriend from high school and they did not end well um he basically betrayed her and so she's still kind of feeling that hurt but now they have to partner up and win and it's kind of like one of those things where weekly they can win more money as long as they keep defeating the next partner week after week after week so uh there is a question in this book about morality there's a question about ethics in within the game show industry that was very interesting however it was it was just it was just fine like um I liked I liked the characters just fine I just didn't think that it was like you know very groundbreaking it was just a good time you know what I mean it was just a good time I think I ended up giving it yeah 3.5 stars the Return of Ellie Black. This is by Amiko Jean. If that name sounds familiar to you, it is because she also wrote Tokyo Rising. It's the re... It's like kind of a retelling of Anna Karenina. But this book, uh, The Return of Ellie Black, is the story of a girl who goes missing. They find her. And the detective who has been on the case for two years is trying to figure out where she went, but she's not talking. And so that's kind of what this whole book is about. Where did she go? What happened to her? Who did this to her? Why isn't she talking about it? Uh, who's actually telling the truth and etc. This is a very intense book. There is a lot that could trigger you in this book, like a lot. Uh, so make sure you do your research before you read if you're easily triggered about um, kidnapping or abuse or anything like that. Make sure, make sure you're checking out those trigger warnings. But overall, um, in general, I liked it. I think I gave it four, um, which as you're going to see, like, because of the fact that I had like a lot of medium books this month, it rained, it rated in my top five, just because of that point. I probably on another month would not have rated it in my top five, but it was. 
And now I just realized that I totally forgot to mention <laughs> earlier in the month the book we did for the Elated Geek Book Club, and that's probably because I hated it. This is Everyone Who Can Forgive Me Is Dead by Jenny Hollander, and if you read this with us, actually, I don't think anyone did. I don't think anyone re read this with us for book club this month. Um, I'm sorry if you did. Uh, I, I hated this book so badly. I gave it 2.5 stars. I ranted about it when it was done. There was absolutely no point for any of the people in the motives. None of the none of the plots made sense and it's not even that long of a book i didn't care about anybody in this book so literally it's the everyone's manipulative by the way this is a story of a girl who uh, went to a college where something pretty traumatic happened on christmas eve but she can't remember what really happened. And then all of a sudden they decide they're going to make a documentary of it many years later. And she's terrified because she thinks she may have actually had something to do with some people dying during this, but she can't remember. And so she doesn't really want the documentary to go because apparently somebody remembers and it's not her. Um, and she doesn't know if she's going to get in trouble. So that's the basic of it. Yes, she does at the end all of a sudden understand what it was that she did. But even when she remembers, she still thinks she's kind of at fault and she still thinks she's going to be held accountable for stuff. I don't know. It, this book just made me angry. Um, so I'm sorry. If you've read this book and you liked it, please tell me why you liked it down below because, yeah. Getting down to the end here, we have The Last to Pie. This is by Misha Pop. So this is the third in the Pies Before Guys mystery series. And a Apparently it's going to be the last, which makes me very sad. This series is about a baker who is magical. So it's kind of like this magical realism book. She can, uh, she comes from a line of women in her family who can uh, put magic into everyday items to affect people. So what she does is she makes pies for people so she can make you feel better. She can make you feel truthful. But like one of the things she does is she avenges women who have been abused who contact her and say like, you know, she can't get out of the situation. Well, she will bake a pie to the person who is abusing them. Um, and basically the actions in the pie basically say, stop what you're doing. And if inherently they can't stop the pie will kill them, but it can't be traced to her because it looks like it's just a natural cause death. So in this book, um, there is a wide range of characters that we've come to know and love in this whole series. And in this book, somebody is, is contacting her in, in a way that she has not set up in the procedure that protects herself uh, from people who have tried to uncover who she is which happened in like book two so in this book she's trying to make sure that the person who's contacting her is legit so she figures out she is sends her a contract uh and the contract never comes back and then this woman literally disappears and she the pie maker basically starts freaking out and starts putting herself in a dangerous situation because the whole reason why this woman contacted her in the first place is because her husband is a cop and thinks he's above the law because he's a cop and he's abusing her. So, uh, yeah, the pie maker has to basically make sure that she's safe, but also find out what happened to this woman. And it was a great time. I liked it a lot. And I'm really sad that we're not going to be having any more books. But, you know, if you've never read the series, please give it a try. And the last one is really no big deal. It's just this Betty Crocker cookbook called Found Recipes. And it's recipes that Betty Crocker has put in her past cookbooks that this person kind of like reorganized uh, into this cookbook. Um, was good. I found a couple recipes I liked, but like no big deal. And, you know, I know you're thinking a cookbook. Like, are you really counting that? Yes, I do. Um, so, yeah, those are all the books I read this month. Please let me know down in the comments if there are any of these that you're really interested in reading. Um, and thank you for joining me this long. And uh, until next time, stay zany.